markets. We have uh, Thomas Lee with us. Hotshot uh, market guy. <laughs> Hope you don't mind that use of that word, hotshot. You'll take it, won't you? No, oh, I should just wear a pilot suit next time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now, you're a managing partner at uh, Fundstat Global, and you like stocks um, that cater to the consumer, like J&J, &J, Procter & Gamble, yes. UPS, Home Depot. What's so good about the consumer this year? Well, the consumer is getting a boost from the millennials because they're a huge cohort and they're starting to make a lot of money. So one, I they think... They are? I thought yes. they were weighed down by student debt. Have you seen the unemployment data? It's quite low, right? It is. Yes, yeah, so they're getting good jobs and they're getting decent pay, but you're right, they are hobbled with student debt. Um, it hasn't hurt as housing as much as people think, though. The uh, Federal Reserve had a study. It's, it's only been a few basis points of homeownership impact. So the debt as big as it is, not everyone, not every millennial has student debt. We keep hearing that the economy is really slowing down and that there's a global slowdown and that consumers are not going to be standing as much as they used to. You're running completely counter to that. Uh, I mean, I think there's a speed bump for sure building and it, it, it's getting quite large as this shutdown gets stretched out. And I think there is a confidence impact from trade, but we don't want to mix up short-term impacts versus sort of true secular changes. And I think the U.S. economy is still quite resilient. Okay. You like chip makers. I mean, the Texas Instruments of this world. Now, why? Um, You're the second person on this program, by the way, who said, like yeah. the chip makers. So we, we wrote about it uh, this year because we, there's this a peculiar seasonality that semis and refiners do unusually well in the first half of every calendar year. And so you almost, whether or not you believe there's a recession or not, you want to make a seasonal bet on the semis. And on top of that, of course, the semis got hit so hard last year and they bottomed last year. It's, it's confusing investors because it, it, it's making them think, is this early cycle or is this a dead cat bounce? But either way, we think it's a seasonal trade. What about, uh, so you, what about Intel? I mean, that thing is down three bucks today. What happened there? Uh, well, you know, of course, there's when, when you know, you've had to face the reality of disappointment. So, um, so you know, Long term, I mean, if you look at it, Intel's done great, you know, and it's a it's a high quality name. It has a pretty good total return in terms of dividend and free cash. Is it a buy at forty six? Yes. It is. Yes. Now, this time last year or late last year, you were on this program and you said that Bitcoin would go to twenty five thousand dollars per coin. I mean, you're nodding sagely there. Yes. And you said it would do that by the end of two thousand and eighteen. Well, obviously. And I was on that bandwagon, guys. I predicted Bitcoin to 25,000 or 20,000 by the end. Did not happen. And uh, this is the chart of Bitcoin's growth uh, since then. Uh, it's done the opposite. Um, so that is unfortunate. But uh, I do have investments also in chip makers. And this is one important reason why you should have a diversified portfolio. Although I was investing a lot of money in crypto, I did also invest in ch uh, chip makers, knowing that uh, there's more than one way to be making money off of the cryptocurrencies. And for now, I'm glad that I did invest in stocks like Intel, NVIDIA. Um, and in the future, when you do investments, this is why it's so important to have a diversified portfolio because Bitcoin and crypto obviously has been a terrible investment for 2018. But on the flip side, uh, I was able to buy some of those chip makers uh, at low prices during their dip in February. And uh, they've been decent. And uh, the stock market for now has been recovering, but I'm slowly just selling more and more of my stocks, holding my crypto, and uh, waiting to buy uh, the dip for the stock market, and just hoping that crypto will rebound and recover, but it might be a long-term play. So I'm uh, going in with a mindset of that I might be holding my crypto for two, three, maybe even four or five years before I start taking some cash out. But let me know your thoughts on this, and I will talk to you soon.